Okay guys, today's video is going to be a little bit different from what I normally post, but it's definitely an important video. For those of you that don't know, my name is Zach, this is SC Fish Keeping, and I appreciate you stopping in. Today's video is going to be about life and death in my fish hobby with specifically two stories that have happened to me over the last month and a half. This is a video that I've wanted to make for a while, but it was hard for me to honestly admit that it happened. The, the death of this fish is, this is one of my favorite fish, and his death happened because of me. It was my fault. It was something I could have prevented. It was something I, well, I'll get into it. I'll explain all of that. The first thing that I want to go over, though, is a success. This is bringing a fish back from literally the edge of death when they jumped out of the tank. So I want to share the story, the tips, and or, you know, just the methods that I use to bring this fish back, and he's healthy, doing amazing now, so I want to share that with you, and then we'll get into the sad part. The video will end on a positive note with some news about my channel, so stick around to the end and you know it's going to be happy and then it'll get sad for just a little bit and then it'll get happy again, so stick around to the end for that. Thank you. Let's start with bringing a fish back to life from the edge of death. So this is the little sunfish that I caught with Millican fishing when we got the smallmouth bass. It is a green sunfish, red ear sunfish hybrid, and this is footage from the same day that we got him and I put him in the tank. As you can see, he's healthy, active, looks great. Well, it didn't take long after I got him for an incident to happen. So I want to walk you over here and show you exactly what happened. As you can see, this is the 40 gallon breeder that's holding the small mouth bass, the smaller one, until I can get it into the pond when I set that up. Um, so after I got the green sunfish, I put him in this tank. He was all alone, uh, had plenty of space, and I was using these you know, greenhouse roofing sheets for lids. The tank was set up just like this. I went ahead and moved the lid back. I had this tiny little gap right there. Well, I didn't realize it, but the sunfish came out of that gap within an hour of getting him in the tank. He came out and he went down there, which it's hard to tell, but I have that power strip there and it's sitting on a plastic tub. So the fish comes out of the tank. I look for 15 minutes with my wife in the tank, out of the tank, around the tank, everywhere we can see that it would make sense that this fish went. Can't find it. As a last stitch effort, I take my phone and I hold it behind the 20 gallon on the floor behind that 40 breeder. That, that's the only way I can see back there. So I hold my phone back there, I take a picture, I'll show you that here in just a second. But at this point, it has been at least 15 minutes since I noticed that this fish was gone. Not to mention the amount of time before I got down there and noticed he was gone, that he has been out of the tank. So, this is what I saw. So that's what I saw, a lifeless fish underneath this clear plastic tub behind the tank. I quickly got back there, got him out, slowly lowered him into the water. He was breathing very, very heavy as you'll see here. So he's breathing very heavy and he's just covered in dust and dirt. So what I did was I, I reached in there and I picked him up because he was laying on his side. Rather than scrubbing him off to get all that dirt and debris off, I just gently kind of rubbed around the gill area to clear that space up. And then slowly, I, I, I wish I had video of this, but I slowly kind of just moved him back and forth in the water, cradling him a little bit to get some oxygen flowing over the gills. It was naturally kind of blowing a lot of this dirt and debris off of him. And I did that. I set him back in the tank. He went straight back to his side. I figured no chance this fish survives. I was super bummed because I was really excited about this fish. But after about two hours, I went back down and I checked on him and this is what I saw. So, pretty dramatic improvement after only two hours. 
So I kept the lights off, I kind of let him do his thing, and came back down two more hours later, so a total of four hours after he'd been out of the tank, and this is what I saw. So, still not doing 100%, but he's actually swimming now. Uh, still kind of covered in some dirt and some debris, but uh, he's swimming on his own. So that was a big improvement. So, turned back off the lights, went to bed, checked on him in the morning, and that video I showed you in the beginning was actually the next morning. So that's here's that again. So as you can see, he is perfect. He's still doing well now, and that was about six weeks ago. So this is a survivor story if I have ever heard one. He was on the brink of death. I probably caught him just in time, honestly. Any longer, he probably would have died. I stayed calm. I took it slowly. I tried to do as little stress or cause as little stress to him as I possibly could. And here we are, brought back from the edge of death. <laughs> but the reason I wanted to talk about this one was just, you know, it pays to be patient, it pays to be calm, and hopefully if you're ever in a situation where because of something like leaving a small gap in the lid, you find a fish on the ground, it is possible if you go slow to revive them and bring them back. So that's why I wanted to talk about this. I did warn you in the beginning though that we were going to get sad for a little bit and that's going to be right now. I'll start the sad part off with a little bit of backstory. When I was considering starting a YouTube channel documenting my fish, I was looking for a fish that people would want to watch. I could buy it young for not a ton of money. It could grow with me, grow with my channel, be a mascot of sorts. And I found this fish. I fell in love immediately. It's a fish that if you've been with my channel for a while, you know. It was actually the second video I ever posted was about this fish. We named it. I'd done a care guide on it. I was super excited. It was, it was, it was such a, an amazing fish. The fish that I came up with was a flower horn. And unfortunately, my flower horn stash did pass away. It happened about five weeks ago and I've wanted to make this video for a while but it's it's kind of difficult for me. It's very difficult for me because it was my fault. It very much could have been prevented but I let it happen. Um, let me show you a picture I took of Stash right before the incident happened. And then I'll just roll right into what happened and I'll come back and I'll tell you how it could have been prevented. So this is the tank. Um, here I'm just showing you the divider and how it was just kind of divided in half. Just like that. I used those rocks to kind of support it and a suction cup. The uh, fish in there knocked it over. Of course they're hiding and I was mad at them and People needed to know what fish uh, was the murderer, and it's that fish right there, which if you are unfamiliar, that is a red devil, which is very aggressive, but the divider had worked for about a month up until this point. So it might have been hard to tell from that video clip. I took it after it happened, and I was kind of mad, and I wasn't really thinking YouTube quality. They're in a 55 gallon with that little DIY divider. Um, I tend to check on my fish every other hour just to make sure that everything's okay. Just kind of do a little walk through. They were fine. Divider was a little bent. I didn't really think anything of it. I didn't, you know, fix it. There were rocks and suction cups. I figured it was fine. Go back upstairs, come back down two hours later. The divider is on its side. The male red devil had knocked it down. And this is how I found my flower horn. 
like I said, only about two hours after I had just looked at him and he was doing great. So as you can see, he was absolutely shredded. I was crushed. This was my fault. I didn't fix that divider. I should have gone and seen that it was crooked, tried to fix it. The suction cup had come loose. The Red Devils just, they, you know, bolted over and the flower horn didn't stand a chance. So, I, I was crushed, like I said, I was angry, but I wanted to try and save the fish. I wanted to do everything I could. So, I took him out, I put him in a 10-gallon quarantine tank that I have above the tank. He couldn't even swim. He was laying on his side. There was a 10-gallon filter on there. Minimal suction in that tank. He couldn't get away from it. He was getting stuck to the filter. I felt terrible. So, I put the aquarium salt in there, which reduces stress. It increases oxygen um, for the fish. And since he couldn't stay upright, I thought... I should help him with that because laying on his side, he's not going to get better. So I took that egg crate, lighting diffuser stuff, and I fashioned this little box with zip ties, suction cupped it to the side of the tank thinking, well, if he can't stay upright, at least I can help him stay upright. And then put a little bubbler with just a tiny little bit of airflow, water current in front of him. So that way, at least he was in my head, he was getting that oxygen flow over the gill. So I'll show you him in this and then tell you what ultimately happened. So as you can see, I built that box a little wide, so that's why that tube was in there so he could stay up. But he survived for about 24 hours. Um, I had taken him out and I would see if he could swim and he just couldn't, so I'd put him back in there. I knew my Time was limited, but I'm not one to just give up and, and call it a day on the fish. I wanted to make the rest of his life as stress-free as possible. Who knows if that's the right decision? I think it was, but unfortunately he did pass away. Um, it's still hard for me to talk about. Like I said, I really just blame myself for this. I should have done more. I should have not used that divider. I've never really used dividers before, but... Anyway, that was the sad part. I did tell you that something positive was going to be at the end of the video. I wanted to, you know, talk about that now. Let me show you what I have going on, which is a direct, you know, cause of losing this flower horn. So you guys go. The exciting happy news that I mentioned at the beginning of the video for my channel is I'm setting up an office a little fish office with my white betta and uh, my 55 gallon back there so I mentioned with the death of that flower horn comes opportunity and this was actually that 55 gallon tank that the flower horn and the red devils are in the red devils are moved I still have them but they're in a different tank but so I decided to move that tank up here and start over, do something new, do something fun with it, and that's where I need you guys. I need you to tell me what fish you wanna see in that tank. The plan for the space is I'm gonna start doing live streams, which I have never done for my channel. So, what do you wanna see, since you'll be seeing that fish in the background a lot? Do you wanna see another flower horn? I can get a baby flower horn and grow it out and have him in there and we'll name him and do all that. Do you want to see something like a green terror pair, which if you've never seen green terrors, or some other bright colored cichlids, or what do you think? I'm leaning towards flower horn just for the personality of it, but I want you guys to tell me. Then next week, I'm planning on doing my first live stream at some point. So in the comments, tell me what fish you want. I'm going to set that tank up. I'll do footage of how I set it up and everything, but the next week in the live stream, I'm going to do a reveal of what fish we all picked for that tank. So thank you for watching. Let me know what fish you want to see in that tank. Hopefully you got something out of this video. Like I said, it, it's different for my channel. I don't typically like to dwell on the sad, but it was important. So thanks for sticking through and I will see you next time.